everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and on this channel we talk about all the houseplant things and I'm so excited to have a chat with you today because oh my gosh, I have not been filming videos because I had pink eye in both eyes, I had COVID, I had really bad allergies. So I'm just now getting back into the swing of working and filming. So if my eyes look a little dead, it's it's because I, I had conjunctivitis in both of my eyes. <laughs> which actually I've heard is correlated to COVID, so that made me feel a little less icky. Uh, it was all related. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is we are going to be talking about five of my favorite houseplants right now. Definitely there are times in my houseplant parenthood where a lot of my plants are really not speaking to me. That's currently happening to me because I'm really focused on outdoor gardening and getting my seeds up, getting my flowers, and I just went annual flower shopping. It was super fun. But yeah, I have a few houseplants that have really made my love of houseplants sort of stick around for the time being, and I wanted to show you which ones those were. And um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Also, this video is sponsored by Audible. We will talk more about them a little bit later. Okay, the first plant on our list is my Alocasia Lauterbachiana. Now, this is a plant that scared me. Okay, I bought it sort of on a whim when I was out shopping in Kansas City with some friends, and I filmed that, so I'll have that linked up in the cards if you're interested. But anyway, it was sort of one of those things where I like, didn't really know much about the plant prior to seeing it. I had seen it at a local nursery in Columbia, and I was like, I really like that plant. I'm gonna wait though. That's usually what I do. When I see a plant that I really like, I don't usually just buy it immediately. I'll see it and I'll think to myself, okay, I'm gonna do some research. I'm going to put some thought into this because I really hate buying a plant and then realizing a few days later that I didn't actually like it. I just bought it to buy it. So if you find yourself in that cycle of buying a plant and then losing interest literally within a few days, stop buying a plant as soon as you see it. <laughs> Chances are it will still be in stock in your local nursery in a few days. It's not the only one in existence. Like if I didn't buy this one, I would have found another one in a few weeks at a different nursery or I could have ordered it online. You will be able to get it again if your local nursery sells out of it and you didn't buy it. That's basically what I'm trying to say to you. So anyway, this one, I saw it. I decided to wait and then I went to a different place in Kansas City. I saw it again and I said, you know what, I've, I've spent some time thinking about this. And I still really like the plant and so I decided to get it. So I guess it wasn't as on a whim as I'm describing it earlier. It has these really lovely lance shaped like curly leaves and they're kind of like uh, curvy. They've got like a nice wave to them and I really, really love that. I really love unique foliage and something i really love also is the undersides are a bit darker not a ton darker but you can see there is definitely a little bit of a difference in color there and i just think that makes it a standout plant as well i just love it i recently repotted it into de la tanks with this bell not bell what, what would this be a cylinder shaped terracotta pot and i really love this pot i think it's so fun i've had it for a while and um, it seems to be really happy and adjusting well to the De La Tank soil. Typically with alocasia, I will add a little bit of coco choir to the mix just to help retain moisture for a little bit longer. But I didn't do that this time, and I'll keep you updated on how it goes. Uh, but so far, so good. Anytime I water this plant, I also give the leaves a nice little clean because alocasia are very prone to spider mites. And me as a person, I am also very prone to spider mites. So spider mites is the thing in my collection that really eats everything and takes over. So, you know, I really shouldn't be saying this, like knock on wood, it's been a while since I've had them, like on a large scale. So usually I'll find it pretty quickly and like I'm able to attack the spider mites where they were, stop them in their tracks, and they don't really get the chance to spread. So doing things like cleaning your leaves, like every time you water, just wiping them down, really helps keep them clear of dust and, you know, if there are any spider mites or something like that, it gets them off the plant a lot faster. Okay, so the next plant I wanna talk about is my Anthurium balloatum. And I actually don't know how to fully show this plant. I'm not using a wide lens, so let me just sort of yeah, we're just gonna do something like this <laughs> to show you um, just how awesome this plant is. It actually, while I was on vacation in Ireland, it put out this leaf. I have to pull the plant back so far to be able to show it to you. Oops, I just heard a little bit of a cracking. 
Don't break the plant, Becca. Okay, so I'm just gonna set it down right here, I think. And it, ooh, beautiful. Okay, so there's a lot of other leaves. They look like this, just smaller. So we're just gonna leave it right here so that I don't break it, because I can anticipate that happening. And while that would be like a really fun blooper for my patrons, I am not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna take the risk. So if you didn't know, I do have a Patreon and I have it linked down below at all times, but yeah, I have bloopers, extra videos, we go live, we do Zoom calls together, we do a plant clinic. It's super fun if you wanna join, but anyway, this leaf came out while I was on vacation in Ireland, and I have not had a leaf this big on this plant yet. They've all been like maybe like this big in comparison, so I'm not sure exactly why this one is so much bigger. I mean, it was a lot closer to the window, and I think while we were on vacation, it was raining like almost every single day. So it was probably very, very humid in this room and probably pretty warm as well. This room is my sunroom and if you've never seen it before, it has a full wall of south windows, basically a full wall of west windows and two skylights. And so it sort of reflects the outside temperatures and conditions. So if it's a little cold and chilly outside, it's probably gonna be cold and chilly in here too. But if it's, you know, raining and very humid outside, we get the benefits of that in here as well. And sun, obviously, it's a super cloudy day, but somehow I'm still able to film right now. It's awesome, this room really saves my life. But anyway, point is, I am pretty sure that this was a product of those conditions, and that's so exciting. I love that this leaf is so big because it just sort of like gives me hope for what this plant could be in the future. It has a really long stem with some like aerial roots trying to come out. So I've considered putting this on a wood plank or something like that because I don't do moss poles, I do wood planks and I have found the results of that to be so much better. I've also thought about like chopping and propping it but I also really love the idea of this just being like a really tall big plant with like huge massive leaves so I think I'm going to curb the desire to chop and prop it and probably put it on a plank of wood and see what happens. We will see but as far as anthurium go they are known for being very picky plants. They need very specialized care, you know, with the soil to the um, humidity to the lighting. They're a little bit more picky. I definitely have my own personal struggles with them. But anthurium that are more like this, like the non-velvet leaf anthurium, like this one, or the king anthurium, I find that those ones tend to be a lot easier and a lot more forgiving based on, you know, what conditions you can give them. This plant has never lived in a closed container at all. It's always just lived in my home and it's always been very happy. It's put out new leaves pretty consistently. And as of recently, when it did get better conditions, it started holding on to the leaves a lot longer because for a while it would put out a new leaf and we'd have all of the leaves for like, I don't know, maybe two weeks and then the oldest leaf would drop off. And then we get a new leaf. So it was sort of, it always had at least three to four leaves on the plant. Um, but now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaves on it, which is pretty cool. And a recent change since I moved here to Columbia and um, just sort of started doing a better job of keeping it watered and obviously the humidity in this room really helps. So anyway, this plant brings me a lot of joy and it would not have been a favorite plant video without mentioning it. Now let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Audible. So if you're a person who's interested in audio entertainment, Audible is the place for you. I personally am a really big fan of Audible and audio entertainment because I really like listening to things while I am doing plant chores, doing house chores, doing gardening, all of these things. I really enjoy listening and ever since I started listening to books specifically, I get so much more done. I personally really like to listen to fantasy and romance as is reflected on my Goodreads account if you wanted to look into that. <laughs> but Audible also has a bunch of other options like thrillers and mysteries, self-help, and so much more. The way that the Audible membership works is you get one credit a month and you can use that credit on any book from their library. And they also have an entire Audible library that you can sort of stream at will to your heart's content. And something that's really nice is if you're keeping up with authors and new books that they're releasing, you can use your credits to pre-order books. I've been doing that lately because there's a few like authors that I follow on TikTok and when I find out about their books and if it's releasing sometime soon, I'll go over to Audible and pre-order it which has been awesome. I've been able to read some books like literally like the day they came out. It's awesome. 
So if you are interested in upping your reading game or just getting some audio entertainment, Audible is offering a 30-day free trial to my followers. If you want to head over to www.audible.com slash DeLaPlants or text DeLaPlants to 500-500, that will get you that free 30-day trial. You can try out some books. I don't know, I think you're really gonna enjoy it. I really enjoy it, and um, yeah, let's get back into the video. Okay, the next plant that I wanna show you is pretty heavy, so we're gonna do an arm workout as I show it to you. So, this is my huge, like, mixing bowl of Fetonia, and this plant is my favorite plant in my entire collection. It always has been, not this specific one, but just the idea of the Fetonia in general has always been my favorite plant. I love Fetonia. Seriously, like, no one will ever convince me to not love Fetonia. I think it is so beautiful, the detail in the leaves and its growth habit. I just think it's awesome. And in my first few Fetonias that I had, they were very leggy and stretched out. And recently, like in the last year, I've discovered that a lot of websites and shops will tell you that the Fetonia is a low light plant. And the reason that they say that is because it literally grows on the ground. It could not be further from the sun. It lives underneath the canopy like most of our house plants. So by nature, and like if we're comparing full sun to you know indoor conditions it is a lower light plant it will be happy in lower light but if you give it higher light it will grow like this completely flat well not completely flat because it's not like outside growing on the ground so if you ever find yourself in a conservatory look down because you might see Fetonia growing as a ground cover, just crawling and creeping across the floor. So this is sort of my way of um, giving it that type of a life without actually having it growing on the ground. So the plant was actually very large and it needed a really big pot to be able to spread out like this. Um, <laughs> I wish that my knees were just slightly longer so I could just set it on my knees. But um, the actual plant matter is more like, I guess like four inches in from the edge of this pot. But as you can see, the plant has started to even cascade over this massive pot, which was a custom pot that Terra Vita made for me. I really loved this new design and I had been talking about how I wanted a really big, like sort of more flat pot for my Fetonia and they came up with this and it's been awesome. I wasn't sure how it would go because the pot is a little long, like the root system probably only goes up to like right here, but I have it potted in De La Tanks, which for my Fetonia, De La Tanks was pretty good for my Fetonia. I think it could use a little bit of Coco Choir. It is a bit um, light for it, but given the fact that there is so much soil in this pot, it stays wet for pretty long and because the soil is so airy there's not water just sitting in it so if you don't know what i'm talking about dela tanks is a soil that i co-created with tanks green stuff and it's a pre-made ready to go pre-measured pre-port like whatever all of that kind of stuff soil for your house plants and i'd say 90 percent of my collection is sitting in it right now if it's not in the dela tank soil it's because it's a newer plant i haven't repotted yet or it's a cactus or it's a plant that i haven't repotted from like years and years ago which I think, actually now that I think about it, I don't know if there's many of those left because most most everything I have repotted recently. So anyway, all that being said, my Fetonia, I love it so much. If you don't have one, I would highly suggest it. This is the plant that really taught me how to take care of plants. Um, it's awesome. Okay, the next plant that I wanna talk about is the Philodendron Crassinervium. And this plant is honestly so unique. I just love it so much. This was gifted to me by a local nursery owner and I have so enjoyed growing it. Um, actually, right when I got it, I broke off the growth point, which was really sad, but it did bounce back and it put out this really cute leaf. It is obviously much smaller than the other leaves that it has been putting out, but we've got another one on the way that you can see right here, and I think that it's gonna be a big one. We will just have to see. But the way that this plant grows is so funny to me. Like, I've been trying to think of how to set it up for success. Um, it is living in my greenhouse cabinet right now, which it is obviously loving because as you can see, look at these aerial roots. They're so, so long. So yeah, I've been trying to think of how to sort of situate this plant to make it happy. I need to look at how it grows in nature to see if I can replicate that. 
because I, I mean, it might creep across like this, but it might also grow like this. I don't remember. I need to look up a photo just to see. And however it grows in nature, I will do my best to make it grow like that in my home. I'm kind of hoping that it is vertical because if it's horizontal, I'm gonna have to get like a really long planter and I feel like it'll fill it up really quickly because you know, the spacing between the nodes is kind of long, but that might also be because it's not getting enough light for it. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, point is, <laughs> it's such a cool plant. As I've spoken about before, it looks like bunny ears. Like other people have said that to me. And it really does, honestly. I mean, very bunny ear-esque. <laughs> it's currently potted in De La Tanks that has very heavy um, cocoa choir in it because I actually rooted this plant completely in cocoa choir, which is something that I do certain times, like depending on the plant, I'll root it in cocoa choir instead of sphagnum moss because the cocoa choir is so much easier to get off of the roots when you're done, you know, rooting it up. And also I don't really hate the idea of cocoa choir being on the roots if it has to be sphagnum moss every time i remove it from the roots i feel like i'm ripping the roots so if you struggle with that and you don't want to do that anymore i would suggest trying out coca choir for that reason yeah i don't really have much else to say about it besides the fact that it's like really cool and when i do have my greenhouse up and running it will 100 percent be going in there because i feel like it will absolutely take off and maybe in my greenhouse i can make it like a custom planter that's like really really long so that it can grow horizontally i don't know again i need to look up how it grows but i'm just super excited to see what this plant becomes in time and i'll keep you updated on what this leaf looks like i just like love how unique these leaves are they're so long like i clearly i love like the lance shaped leaves um and i just love that it has this like stem in the middle and you know what this plant puts off a lot of um sap which is something that attracts pollinators like out in nature like ants and things like that so it's always like kind of sticky <laughs> like i think i just got it in my hair because i touched this and then i touched my hair which is annoying but hey it's it's doing that it does it. it sweats a lot so she's a sweaty girl if you like if you're a sweaty girl yourself <laughs> maybe you'll find um that you can be sweaty together <laughs> Okay, the last plant that I want to talk about today is my Anthurium clarinervium, which I feel like I've talked about this plant recently, but maybe I haven't. So let's show her off. Look at her. It's like a full circle of beautiful leaves. Like I'm just going to give her a good rotation. Ooh, every leaf is just so beautiful until we get to this one. That one isn't, this one's not very pretty, but hey, hey, we come back around. Ooh, we got a new leaf right here and it has a bloom on it which is putting off a lot of pollen and I think it has a smell it has a smell <laughs> it smells like um, rotting flowers like I really don't know what else to explain that as I really should look up what is the pollinator for anthurium because I, I, I mean it's not bees I don't think a bee would like that smell <laughs> maybe it's like a fly or something but anyway um, this is a plant that since I potted it up in different soil, it pff, keeps hitting me in the head. I hope I'm not getting like pollen in my bangs. I'm gonna turn it because I don't really like the idea of that stuff being in my hair. Anyway, let's take a journey with this plant. So I had this, I got this plant from um, a seller in Sweden, plant that plant a couple years ago, I think in 2019 or maybe early, early 2020, if anything, but I think it was 2019 and it was huge the leaves were i think bigger than my face and it was so exciting i was stoked um and then it started acclimating to my house in tucson and it started losing a lot of leaves obviously because it was not getting the conditions that it needed i did have it in my bathroom with the humidifier so it was like the best i could do at the time and it just was not happy and then i moved to missouri and it was really not happy with me and i think it had two leaves left and I was suspicious that it had root rot. I don't know why, but I was just like, mm, something doesn't feel right here. So I unpotted it, the soil was horrible, and sure enough, it did have root rot. And so I removed all the old soil, I removed some old um, roots and things like that. It wasn't that developed, so I was able to save it from that point without you know, rehabbing it completely. But at that point, I repotted it into De La Tank soil, and ever since then, I and then I also put it in my greenhouse cabinet. And I think that 
the combination of the better soil and the conditions in my greenhouse cabinet has made the plant what it is today. You're always gonna think that you have the prettiest plants, right? But I really think that this is one of the prettiest Clarinerviums that I've ever seen. The leaves are so beautiful and soft and big, actually. They're very big leaves, and they keep getting bigger, which is exciting. Like, this one right here is not hardened off yet, and I think it's already bigger than like this one, for example. I think it is. Yeah, it is already bigger. So the leaves are getting bigger and bigger, which is really great. Hopefully one day they will be back to their original size from when I bought it. What it does is it'll put out a new leaf and then it'll bloom, then it'll put out a new leaf and then it'll bloom. So it's a pretty consistent bloomer and I feel like I really should take advantage of that and like collect the pollen. And I did have some pollen from a forgetii that I tried to pollinate this um, flower with, but clearly it didn't work. So it's putting off um, pollen now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gather this pollen in like a little cup and put it in my freezer. And then once it blooms again and it's like showing that it's ready to be pollinated, I will brush on the pollen and hope, 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 cross my fingers that it will make little berries, which will then be seeds. And I'm, I don't know if you can use pollen from the same plant to pollinate itself. I think you can. So I've seen, I think I've seen other people do that, but the whole like pollinating your own anthurium thing is so new to me and I've never been successful, but I have tried multiple times <laughs> and I've never been successful. So what I think I'm gonna do, normally I cut off the flower and I just put the entire flower in a bag in the freezer, but this time I'm just gonna collect the pollen. I'm not gonna take the entire flower because I think that you can be more successful if you just take the pollen. So we will see how it goes. Um, I'll keep you updated on that whole situation. If that ever happens for me and I'm successful, I will definitely document it. But anyway, that's all I have to say about this gal. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and humoring me as I chat just so much about my plants. I haven't sat down and talked on a video just all about my plants in a while. So as I said earlier, sorry, I'm a little chatty, but I think that it was really fun to get together and chat with you. And you know, I feel like we're hanging out. We're, we're on FaceTime right now. <laughs> and I just didn't stop talking for like 25 minutes. It was really fun for me. I hope it was fun for you. <laughs> All right, you guys, if you're not already, make sure that you're subscribed and check out Audible if you haven't already. I love Audible, great way to listen to books and other audio material, it's super awesome. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.